everyone, it's Emma here and today I am talking through diet tips for cystitis. Um, so cystitis is a really interesting area. Um, technically cystitis is inflammation of the bladder um, and very often this inflammation is caused by an infection but actually not always. We have other um, states to consider such as interstitial cystitis as well. So it's really, really interesting and one that that and considering your diet can be a nice one to delve into to see what you can do yourself to help to help yourself and um, especially when the symptoms are recurring um quite often people look towards diet to see to see what they can do um, and unfortunately and fortunately there's different ways of looking at it your diet can be full of things that could potentially irritate or upset the bladder but at the same time there's lots that you can include to help support um your bladder so this is why i, I like to quite often look at the positive positives because it's not all about oh, what do we need to cut out feel really stressed there's nothing I can have anymore actually it's not just about cutting things out it's actually about adding useful beneficial elements in as well and um, so I'm going to talk through some foods and drinks here and explain just why they can be helpful and hopefully how you can how that you can make this achievable so number one without a doubt is water so this is obviously something that you're going to drink um, drinking water is honestly helpful for every single system of the body. I can't think of many systems that it isn't useful for. Um, but particularly the bladder and your urine output has quite a direct um, influence there. So drinking plenty of water keeps to help your, your urinary tract flushing through and it also helps to keep your urine nice and dilute. So quite concentrated urine can um, create an environment that bacteria are more likely to flourish in. Um, the, the bad bacteria that is we've always got this balance of good and bad bacteria throughout our whole bodies but it's this situation if the bad bacteria um, outweigh the good then we can have an infection or an imbalance in those bacteria um, so keeping hydrated is one of the, the best things you can do and aiming to drink at least two litres of water daily and also trying to keep your water separate from your meals um, so to, to protect your lovely gastric secretions, stomach acid and digestion are also really important processes involved in the bigger picture of cystitis. So I would say that to try and keep those separate from your, real, your meals as well. Number two, we have trying to include lots of complex carbohydrates. Um, so co complex carbs include nice um, whole grain brown seeded breads, your brown rice, um, those wholemeal flours as I've said, your grains such as quinoa, beans, um, also starchy root vegetables, you, you know, using those whole vegetables, um, potatoes, parsnips, sweet potatoes, skin on if you can, just for that extra fibre. Um, and it's this fibre contained in complex carbohydrates, which in particular can help support your digestion and help to protect against constipation. And constipation is especially readily associated with interstitial cystitis. So not necessarily when there's an infection at play, but perhaps some underlying inflammatory processes. Um, so fiber is really anti-inflammatory, particularly for your digestion and for keeping things um, moving. Also some other sources of fiber, um, just less so but your your nuts and your seeds as well but crucially a lot of these can contain omega-3 which is an, another lovely um, anti-inflammatory ingredient and quite often in the western style diet we have too much omega-6 versus omega-3 and it's this omega-3 which is particularly anti-inflammatory so that's just another um, little foodie tip there as well. Um, number three we have cranberry juice Um, so Fruit juice in general can be a bit tricky because in excess, um, it's considered a little bit acidic within your body um, as a whole, slightly pro-inflammatory, but the ex exception here is cranberry juice. So cranberry juice contains a, you, quite a unique element called D-mannose and this helps to help prevent bacteria from sticking to the inside of your urinary tract. So there has been quite a lot of research around this, which I can quote in the description. So cranberry juice would be one to include. I always say to go for a good quality cranberry juice with no added refined sugars. So such as your biota cranberry can be a lovely one. Um, 
but even then you'd be looking around at around 100 mils a, mils a day um, still absolutely prioritizing your water but the cranberry can be a nice element um, to add in and you have cranberry tablets as well uh, if you're cautious of the juice the juice intake so I can also give you a link to cranberry tablets if you're keen to get a little bit of a higher dose of those beneficial elements. Um, moving through some other um, positives, some other elements you can add in, remembering that if you're adding more in of certain beneficial dietary components, you're probably likely to be cutting out or reducing your intake of other perhaps less helpful elements. So I've got your fresh vegetables and your fruit um, in any, any form actually, not necessarily fresh or frozen fruit and veg helps to retain lots of those lovely beneficial um, nutrients, so your vitamins, your minerals, fibre, antioxidants, phytochemicals, all super anti-inflammatory. They're going to help support your gut, your digestion, your gut bacteria, also your immune system though, providing all the nutrients, your vitamin C, your zinc, everything you need to keep uh, help keep your immune system healthy as well. And remember, it's your immune system that we are relying on to detect and hopefully get rid of any infections. And that's throughout your body, including within your urinary tract. So it's just trying to support um, the overall picture, your immune, your immunity, not just solely focusing on your, your immune uh, your urinary tract and gut health is massive as well in terms of your overall health and that's just me, me moving into my next point um, with you, natural yogurt so really good quality natural yogurts have been fermented and this can mean they contain a dose of good um, good bacteria um, left in there so these good bacteria are, are hugely associated with better overall health um, and the bacteria in your gut translate into your urinary tract, your vagina, all these areas as well. So really supporting that good bacteria can be a good place to start. You can do this through foods with your natural yogurt and all your fermented foods or you can do a step up and get a supplement such as your probiotics. You can get kind of everyday probiotics just for overall health, targeting all those areas that I've mentioned, your gut bacteria is linked to mood, weight balance, immunity, everything. Or we have, there, there is very specific um, female health probiotics, for example, if it's if you're more concerned that your urinary tract um, infections are quite recurrent, remembering that the, these can be more common in women as well. Then talking about the, the probiotics but arguably prebiotics is a step even before this and this is um, with options such as Mulcazan that we have in our range containing a source of L plus lactic acid and this helps to support the environment within the gut where these good bacteria um, thrive and, and live so these good bacteria themselves produce lactic a L plus lactic acid. So if we can include more in our diet, then these bacteria these bacteria are more exposed to that and are more likely to thrive. So just about supporting that balance of the good versus the bad, um, the bad bacteria. Now just a couple of areas to limit. First of all, I have acidic or inflammatory foods. Um, so when we talk about acidic, this is how they, they translate in the body, how they, how they are metabolised. And foods which are considered more inflammatory include, include your black teas, coffee, they're very, these are very caffeine heavy for one, um, fizzy drinks loaded with sugars, artificial sweeteners, alcohol, very processed meats. Um, these are all areas um, which can be considered quite infra infra uh, inflammatory um, and they, when we're talking about the urinary tract they can be quite irritating um, and the digestion actually and risk throwing off your balance of bacteria um, in and around these areas. Um, so these are all areas to consider and it can be a quite individual but perhaps an area you could make some food swaps and just perhaps try and include more of the foods that we've already talked about. Um, when we think about carbohydrates next, your simple, quite refined carbs, again, can be quite inflammatory in terms of how they are metabolised. So we've got quite obvious refined sugars, which can be found in, in 
less obvious processed choices so even quite savoury options but lots of your packaged and processed foods and um, will contain these white refined carbs um, and then your more obvious white breads and white rice options there um, and pastas they're processed quite quickly can affect your blood sugar levels and can have quite a negative impact in terms of the balance of bacteria in your gut and other microorganisms as well such as yeasts and things and this overall picture can can add to the, the problem with UTI, cystitis um, and other female um, imbalances as well. Um, so now just to touch on supplements just to, to wrap up here um, so you've got lots of your um, multivitamin supplement options which can be nice just to top up some of your levels of some of the key nutrients that we've mentioned today. So your balanced mineral drink for example can be a nice one or probably more relevant to, the date, to today's topic are immune support and that contains nutrients such as your vitamin C and your zinc for helping to support your immune system um, and vitamin D as well actually to support your immune system and therefore help to detect and deal with those infections. Then we have our URC and echinacea complex. This is quite specific to managing the urinary symptoms associated with cystitis and UTIs. Um, so you can use this if you have a current infection to try and get that under control. Um, just like many, um, similar to medications actually, um, but this one in terms of on the PIL, um, if if you find that it isn't helping the symptoms after seven days, um, we would say to stop taking it and to go for further investigations. Um, but just in case that it isn't cystitis or um, you know, you're not you need further investigation to find out the root of the cause. So we would just give a little little um statement regarding that. Um, but hopefully that helps give you a nice overview of dietary tips for managing cystitis and UTIs. As always, please do leave any comments or questions below and we will get back to you or head over to our AVOGO website where we can um, help on the helpline if you want to give a bit more information. Please also do subscribe to our AVOGO YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so you will be notified of any future videos. Thanks!